Hello, I'm John. Welcome back to the series where I play and review every crypto and NFT game from the perspective of a gamer. Today, we'll be playing a game called Crixivia. As described by Crixivia themselves, they're a 3D NFT multiverse MMORPG web game on the blockchain. Welcome to the play to earn experience. Well, it seems that English is not Crixivia's strong suit. I guess this isn't that surprising, given that the development team seems to be French. Now, I don't have a problem with French people, but could they really not afford to pay a native English speaker to proofread this? This looks unprofessional. Despite the poor writing, at least the artwork on their website looks cool. There's a trailer for the game on the homepage as well, so let's give it a watch. But this awoke its thousand-year-old guardians. At the foot of this majestic door, hordes of merchants and mercenaries came to enrich themselves. A glimmering city emerged from the rocks. They called it Crixivia. Today, adventurers from all around the world flock to the streets of the new town to quench their thirst for Crixit. Take part in the Crixit rush and join the ranks of merchants and mercenaries. The adventure begins now. Well, this doesn't really tell me too much about the game, but it sure does get me hyped up. Reading around their website and their white paper, it seems that Crixivia's main philosophy is that players should own all of their in-game assets and be able to trade them freely. This is all supported by using highly innovative blockchain technology. In fact, their website does not show any gameplay footage or even really explain what type of game this is, outside of saying that it's an immersive 3D MMORPG, which is quite vague. Seriously, there's three pages of text here, and there's only one line that isn't about crypto, blockchain, or NFTs. I mean, imagine a non-crypto game website where instead of showing a gameplay trailer, they just talk about how cool the game's engine is and how they're using a cutting edge linked list database. Wow, who cares? Crypto people care, that's who. They don't need to see any game, they just hear the words crypto, NFT, and metaverse in the same sentence and then they're frothing at the mouth. And most of the time, they're not at all interested in actually playing the game. They just wanna try and make a quick buck. Well, if the website won't tell us anything about the game, then I guess we have no choice but to do our own research. Let's get suited up and click play now. Crixivia can be played directly in your browser without needing to download anything, similar to Decentraland. It looks like the only way for us to create a Crixivia account is by connecting a crypto wallet. There's no option to use a username and password. While this sounds like a good way to manage logins in theory, in practice, it creates a new issue that traditional usernames and passwords never had. Crypto wallets are, by design, only secured by a seed phrase. That means if you forget or lose your seed phrase, or if someone else gets access to your seed phrase, you're screwed. Nobody can help you, not even the game's developers, and everything in that wallet is now gone forever. Now, some people say this is useful since it lets you use one single wallet for all experiences within the world of Web3, similar to single sign-on, like with a Google account or a Facebook account. I've seen this argument before, but I find it odd since it seems to go against just about every piece of advice that I've been given for safe operating procedures in the world of crypto. To be as secure as possible, people recommend that you have a different wallet for every crypto app that you connect with. That way, if one of the apps happens to have a malicious smart contract that can drain your wallet, you only lose a portion of your overall funds. So this just means that instead of keeping track of a bunch of usernames and passwords, you instead keep track of a bunch of different wallets and seed phrases. And since there's no forgot password button when it comes to a crypto wallet, you better keep those seed phrases in a safe place, preferably engraved into steel and stored underneath your mattress. All of this effort just to play a video game? This better be the best game on earth. Otherwise, I can guarantee you that nobody outside of the crypto sphere will even get past this login screen. Regardless, do the benefits of using crypto make it worth the terrible user experience? I guess we'll find out after we play the game. After a lengthy loading screen, I'm finally dropped into the character creation menu of Crixivia. Oh my, I don't think I'm allowed to show this on YouTube. I'm not sure why, but the female models are anatomically correct, but not the male models, because that would be gay. This character creation process is nothing short of depressing. 
Your only customization options are gender, hairstyle, skin color, or eye color. And for some reason, you use a slider to change your hairstyle, yet there's only three to choose from. So much for immersive and exciting. This is more like boring and low effort. As usual, I picked my typical Vanta Black skin and fluorescent hair and clicked play now to enter the world of Crixivia. Wow, this is a lot to take in. They've definitely got um, an old school graphics style for sure. And also like an old school game, there's no tutorial. Can't say I expected much though. At this point, it's the norm for a crypto game to just drop you straight into the action. I take a few steps forward and speak to this woman named Geraldine, who welcomes me to Crixivia. You came here in search of glory and riches, didn't you? Oh, you dropped your comma. Let me just fix that. Clicking through these dialogue options treats me to some amazing exposition. With the creative writing skills of a fifth grader, Crixivia really doesn't sell me on its so-called exciting world right off the bat. I'm not entirely sure that the developers care about the world building and lore either, as about halfway through this conversation, they've just decided to stop giving my character any interesting response, and instead, I just say, next. One of Geraldine's dialogue options has an exclamation point next to it. I select the option, I want to meet the people of Crixivia. Upon clicking accept, the quest log appears in a window to the right, but there's no sort of direction or indication as to where I can find these four lovely individuals. Geraldine, you're a harsh teacher, but fine, I'll figure this one out myself. Stepping forward into the great city of Crixivia has quite an effect on the game's frame rate. Despite looking like RuneScape in 2005, Crixivia can hardly handle a steady 30 frames per second, dropping down as low as 12 frames per second just as I walk through the town. Since I haven't the faintest clue where I'm supposed to go, I decided to just wander around the town, determined to speak to everyone here in search for the Legendary Four. But suddenly, I receive a pop-up, labeled Tutorials. Just what I like to see. Well, after reading through a few of these, I've concluded that these are less tutorials and more of just vague descriptions of what different features in the game do. None of these tutorials go into any meaningful detail. Bank. Use the bank to store items. Okay, that's obvious. Maybe you should tell me where the bank is. Dungeons. Fight terrifying bosses and use the catalyst to increase the boss's difficulty. Hold on, you haven't even taught me how to perform combat. Now you're trying to tell me to go into a dungeon? NFT, Networked Forwarding Thaumaturgy. <laughs> That's a good one. Of course, this explains nothing about how to use NFTs, just gives you some lore. NFTs are the greatest human discovery since the invention of the wheel. I don't know about that one. I think that award should go to the Funko Pop. They also spelled NFT wrong as NTF. How does something like this make it through to production? Does Crixivia have no quality assurance team? Dragon Golem, where do they come from? They must have their mother waiting for them somewhere, don't you think? Oh, I guess not. Now is a perfect time to mention that Crixivia is in beta, because of course it is. I know, I know, alpha, beta, my usual complaint, but this is one of the worst that we've seen yet. Crixivia already had a private alpha and a pre-alpha test over the past year, so this truly is the beta. I can't imagine how bad the alpha looked. Mistakes this blatant shouldn't have even made it through to the live build. I've done nothing so far but walk around for 5 minutes and I've already seen enough crazy mistakes that I've lost count. This total lack of quality control is alarming, and speaking as someone with experience leading a development team, this game shows every sign of a lack of communication and poor management behind the scenes. As I wander the empty streets of Crixivia, I decide I must blend in with the locals should I want to be accepted. In my best impression of one of the few who understand, I relay the classic crypto bro greeting, good morning, using the game's chat feature. Unfortunately, the locals must have seen right through my disguise as I've received no response. After about 9 more minutes of entering every building and speaking to any NPC that I find, I finally encountered the legendary Kroll, a man whose tales I've only heard but could never believe. Shuddering in awe of his might, I hardly muster the courage to speak with him. He blesses me with these inspiring words of encouragement. We are the sword and shield of humanity. Filled with determination, I continue my search for the remaining legends of Crixivia, Kryel and Shio. Kriel, the blacksmith, has the following words of wisdom to share. Only courage and determination will annihilate these monsters. Not exactly what I was looking for. I expected maybe a tutorial on how to use his services. But I guess I should set my expectations a little bit lower. This is a crypto game, after all. As it's pretty clear at this point that nobody's going to be teaching me how to perform combat, I decided to take matters into my own hands. 
I begin clicking random buttons on the screen and discover I have access to a spell book. Here, I tried dragging spells to my action bar, and to my surprise, that's exactly what I was supposed to do. With my newly equipped spells, I discarded my original plan of tracking down the four legends of Crixivia and instead go directly to the large door in the side of the mountain. This must be the mines of Crixivia from the game's trailer. It looks like there's only one option for a place to go at this door. Training. This is the tutorial boss, a training dummy set up by the citizens of Crixivia to test... To test what? What twisted experiments were the citizens of Crixivia testing? Intrigued, I embark for the adventure of a lifetime by clicking enter. The game then loads for a few minutes and I am presented with the following message. Failed. I am unworthy. It's at this point that I decided that I might just be better off using the game's downloadable client instead because these performance issues are getting unbearable and I haven't even tried the game's combat yet. After a brief download, I relaunched the game from the client. Wow, this is a breath of fresh air. While the graphical quality of the game has not been improved, the frame rate certainly has. With a hop and a skip in my step, I returned to the great gate of Crixivia, longing for battle. Alright, let's try again and hope it works. Unfortunately, while my camera has loaded into the dungeon, it seems that my player model has gotten lost along the way. Without my character, I can't exactly do much, so I try to use the Return to Crixivia feature on the menu to no avail. All F4 it is then, time to try again. Alright, attempt number three. Finally, I've managed to load into the first dungeon. This isn't so much of a dungeon as it is a straight path leading to a massive training dummy. Regardless, time for combat. Quixivia has a very interesting combat system. Enemies attack by casting various red shapes on the ground. Standing in these red shapes causes you to take damage, so you must use careful positioning skills and the dodge roll ability if you want to stand a chance. You can use your abilities by using the number keys, and your attacks, similar to the enemies, also cast shapes on the ground. It's a clever hybrid of action combat and cooldown based skills, and it's challenging yet fair. My only complaint is that this just feels unfinished. The animations are clunky and unsatisfying, and many of the attacks are missing audio cues. However, my ping was 100 milliseconds, so at least some of these issues would have been alleviated should I had lower ping. But in general, this doesn't really feel that bad. Actually, it's impressive when compared to the quality of the rest of the game. While Crixivia may have an incomprehensible and confusing interface, no sort of direction or guidance, and laughably poor writing, at least their combat system is sort of competent. With the courage and advice from my wise mentor Shio, I was able to overcome the vile Crixivian experiment in the cave and return to town, a hero. But now what? I didn't receive any rewards for my troubles, nor did I gain any sort of experience points. Since I neglected the original request from Geraldine earlier, perhaps that's what's limiting my progression. I take some time to continue my venture through the streets of Crixivia, searching for the final of the famous four, Shio. Oh, didn't recognize you with that hat. Sorry, Master Sho. Nomad, merchant, my heart wanders. And you? With my first quest complete, I begin my trek back to the friendly face who welcomed me to this mysterious land, Geraldine. While walking back to Geraldine, I was constantly rolling to get around faster, and in doing this, I noticed that the roll animation causes my player model to float midair. Nice. After reaching Geraldine, I turn in my quest. My reward? Nothing at all. Speaking to Geraldine again yields no more dialogue. It looks like she has no more quests for me. So I'm on my own again. Naturally, I continue my exploration efforts to familiarize myself with the layout of Crixivia's central city. Unfortunately, there isn't anything interesting that I haven't seen yet besides this small garden with some practice dummies. After taking a few swings at them with my sword to hone my skills, I begin the long journey back to the door to challenge my next foe. However, upon interacting with the door, it seems that I'm stuck in combat and am unable to access the mines. I can only assume that this had something to do with the target dummies that I attacked earlier. They must have placed a curse on me as punishment for my unprovoked violence. Effectively locked out of doing anything at all, I have no choice but to close the game and try again. Unfortunately, when attempting to log back in, I kept receiving this error informing me that my account was already signed in. No amount of clicking around fixes this, so I'll F4 and restart again. Crixivia, you're a fickle beast, but I won't give up until I've seen it all. After reconnecting, I noticed that a variety of exclamation points have now appeared on my minimap. I'm pretty sure that these weren't here before, but following them leads me to this lovely young Violet. I'm interested in herbalism, could you help me get started? Find and gather 10 Whiteberry. Okay, sounds good. But how? Where? 
This quest doesn't even have a description or any objective. Like, look at this. It just says, colon, zero out of 10. This isn't even funny anymore. They've completely forgotten to add quest text. Exiting the building in complete disbelief, I noticed that the minimap does not seem to actually line up with where my character is in the real world. I'll be walking down the street, but the minimap shows me phasing straight through a building. Regardless, led by the allure of yet another yellow exclamation point, I speak to Cryo. Hey. Well, at least this quest gives me some form of instruction. Coal ores can be found in the dungeon, out of 10. I also noticed that the exclamation point doesn't disappear after accepting the quest. This total inconsistency and unexpected behavior makes me think that the developers are completely lost. Attempting to make an MMO is a classic pitfall that inexperienced game developers fall into all the time. There's been dozens of examples of overly ambitious Kickstarters for MMOs over the years, and almost all of them fail to even launch a minimum viable product. Designing a massive game world with many interconnected systems is extremely difficult and requires not only a large and experienced team, but a lot of time and money. Compare this to Crixivia, which, according to their white paper, is being developed by a team of six people. They need to take a step back and work on the basics before they try and make a game with such a large scale. I think now is the perfect time to mention something else important. Crixivia is not an MMO. It's an online game with instanced multiplayer dungeons. Well, at least I think it is, but I haven't actually tried to explore outside of the city, so maybe there truly is a vast open world that I'm completely missing. It's at this point that I decided to break free from the borders of Crixivia and venture out into the wilderness. Heading outside the city limits, I very quickly encountered an invisible wall. So looks like I was right. You can't actually go anywhere you want. After returning from my journey to the great beyond, I proceeded to the dungeon to go look for that coal. After entering the dungeon, I glanced around the room, but there's no coal anywhere to be found, so I defeated the training dummy yet again. Same as last time, I received no reward. Once I had exited the dungeon, I just so happened to look over to my right to see Kroll has a star over his head. Speaking to him reveals that he actually has a quest for me. He asked me to go into the dungeon and defeat the tutorial dummy, which by now I've already done twice. After accepting this quest, an exclamation point appears both over his head and on the map. This is actually ridiculous. Depending on which NPC you're talking to, the function of the exclamation point seems to differ. It could mean quest available, quest in progress, or maybe just mean nothing at all. It's like each NPC was coded by a separate developer, and at no point did they connect to ensure that there was consistency in how their systems were designed. Shocking, but again, indicative of poor management and planning behind the scenes. Well, I guess I gotta go beat the training dummy for the third time. After doing this, I turn in the quest and receive a reward. Immediately after, I'm given a new quest to defeat the K1 rig. Back to the dungeon it is. Okay, the K1 rig dungeon. Instead of the fiery, magma-filled cave from the tutorial, I'm now in Temple Run. Well, here goes nothing. Turning the corner, I'm immediately assaulted by two spiders and a boar, who tear me to shreds. Unlike the tutorial boss battle earlier, these smaller enemies don't have the cones on the ground to indicate that they're attacking, they just seem to damage you by touching you, with no indication on how you can dodge them. This is so annoying. While the training dummy boss fight felt tough but fair, these small enemies are unpredictable and very strong. After dying, I click back to Crixivia and the game crashes. After relaunching the game, I challenge the fierce spiders and the boars of the K1 rig dungeon once again, to no avail. Hoping for a miracle, I ask in chat if anyone is online. While I await a response, I continue speaking to every NPC, as it's the only way that I can be sure that they don't have a quest for me. Along the way, I encounter the cleverly named NFT guy. They really just named him NFT guy? Speaking to him opens a menu where I can select an item and export it as an NFT. The way that Crixivia works is that items can exist in two forms, as in-game items or as NFTs. To trade an item outside of the game, you must speak to the noble NFT guy to export that item to your linked cryptocurrency wallet. After a short wait, the item will appear as a token in your wallet. Then, you can freely trade that item on a marketplace such as OpenSea. Once somebody purchases your token, they receive it in their wallet, where they can then go import it back into the game. However, this feature didn't seem to be working at the time, as clicking on the items didn't do anything. I headed to the game's Discord to ask for help, and here I learned that the system is, in fact, not working. 
but I can still trade items by sending them to other players' banks in-game. So clearly the game has a functioning in-game trading system, they've just outsourced the real money trading to the blockchain. Why didn't they just keep everything in-game though? There's no technical limitation to handling all trading in-game, even with the real money trading. Diablo 3 had an in-game real money auction house at one point, and another game, Entropia Universe, which is nearly 20 years old, has been built entirely around a real money economy. Both of these games handled this through traditional database structures and normal payment methods like credit and debit cards. No need for blockchain or crypto. So it seems so far that the cons of using the blockchain outweigh the positives. It's overly complicated, it's not user friendly, and for everything I've seen so far, unnecessary. Nobody ever complained about the current state of real money trading in games until blockchain came around. Then, suddenly, you have all of these people, who are all trying to sell you something, mind you, saying that gamers don't truly own their assets and they need the blockchain to save them from the corrupt and ever-present evil corporations. Not only was this never a problem, but that statement's not even true. Whether you use the blockchain or not, the developers still have complete control over the in-game items. You don't truly own anything, no matter what the developers say. While I was in the game's Discord asking about the NFT export system, I witnessed a conversation between a player and a moderator of the game. This player admitted to using an exploit to defeat a very difficult boss in the game, and then was trying to sell the items that they had looted. The moderator then removed the listing and informed the player that he is not allowed to sell those exploited items. What about truly owning your assets, or code is law? It's the developers' fault that they allowed this glitch to get through to the live game, isn't it? I spoke to the moderator privately after this to get a little bit more context on their stance of true ownership. He explained that by preventing the user from trading the items, they're ensuring the integrity of the game's marketplace. Ultimately, there's nothing preventing the developers from blacklisting your items, banning you from the game, or removing all of the value from the items that you supposedly own. Actions like this go against the core belief outlined in the game's own white paper. So what's the point of using the blockchain? Not only are the developers doubling their workload because they have to maintain two separate databases for their game, they don't even adhere to their own logic for doing that in the first place. Now, I completely agree with the moderator and the game developers here. Sometimes you have to roll back items when players find an exploit, or else you risk the entire game's economy becoming ruined overnight. In my opinion, the concept of true ownership for digital items is a load of nonsense meant to take advantage of people who just don't understand how video games work. Using the blockchain for in-game items is nothing more than selling a non-functional solution for an imaginary problem. Returning to the world of Crixivia, I've told myself that I must at least defeat this K1 rig boss before I finish my review. I recall one of the vague tutorial texts mentioning something about socketing gems at the blacksmith, so I headed back to Kryle, the town blacksmith. Speaking to him opens a window where I can socket gems into my items. In Crixivia, spells and skills are not learned through a talent tree or trainer NPC like in other MMOs. Instead, skills are learned from socketing gems into your equipment, similar to the game Path of Exile. These different gems, when equipped, allow you to cast different spells contained within the gems. It's a neat system, and it allows for great depth in player customization, so I'm a fan of it. But just like everything else in Crixivia, this menu is hardly functional. In order to socket a gem, I must first drag the item off of my character and to my inventory. Then I must drag the item to the socketing window. It's an annoying and unnecessary step that, half of the time, simply doesn't work at all, causing you to have to close and reopen the socketing window. Since I'm unable to defeat the K1 rig by myself, I keep asking in chat to see if anyone can help me. Finally, someone responds. I invite my friend to my party and we head to the dungeon gates to challenge the rig yet again. Something of note here on this dungeon menu is that there appears to be three checkboxes. I can only assume that they're to select which role you'll be performing in the dungeon, healer, damage, or tank. Unsurprisingly, none of these boxes actually do anything, and it seems that the Find Group button is also non-functional, as every time I click on it, the game just goes to a loading screen and then crashes. Why would you have these features enabled if they don't do anything, or even worse, crash the game? This is your beta, right? You had a whole alpha to figure this stuff out, yet you still left it in the game? Or did you just add this in a broken state? The developer in me is constantly baffled by the decisions that this team has made. Anyway, after entering the dungeon together, I go to chat a message to my new friend to discuss strategies for defeating the fearsome boars and spiders. Unfortunately, it appears that the chat function does not work inside of a dungeon. Through the power of teamwork, we're able to slay the boar and the spiders, and collected some loot and mined ore along the way. 
The looting and mining features are as clunky as the rest of the game. To mine, you need to left click on an ore node, and then, after watching the animation, you must right click it to loot it. If you left click instead, your character just performs the mining animation again, but nothing happens. Despite this, we continue forward, communicating via jumping, since speaking is not allowed here. Finally, we've reached the rogue AI mining unit, the K1 rig. An epic battle ensues. The red circles and cones from the training dummy fight return here. This boss hurts, and I nearly died a few times. Remembering that I had received some health potions as a reward from a quest earlier, I opened my inventory, but the potions aren't there. Where'd they go? Did I not even receive them in the first place? In this longer fight, I noticed that every single attack depletes some of my mana. Since my mana resource regenerates rather slowly, we both reached a point at which our damage slowed down to a crawl. This is an odd design choice. I don't think that it should cost mana to use a basic attack that should be reserved only for the more powerful spells. Regardless, we eventually triumphed over the rogue automaton, and I received my very first items, a staff and something called a blue catalyst. Time to return to the village and share my tales of triumph with the townsfolk. I gotta say, this was a fun experience, teaming up with someone to defeat the difficult boss. Despite the absolute jank that is just about everything with this game, the combat system is competent enough to be entertaining. I'm proud of the developers for at least having one semi-functional game system. Returning to town, we share the glory with the other players in chat, which has now become a little bit more lively over the few hours that I've been playing this game. I continued to play Crixivia for a little bit longer, chatting with some of the other players and defeating the K1 rig boss a few more times with my new friend. I tried to fight the next boss, Valtrina, but this one was so hard that I couldn't even survive one hit from the small monsters in the cave, so there's no chance that I'm going to beat this with my current gear. I asked how I could get better gear, and I was told that the only way I can get new items is to either buy them off of the NFT marketplace or to keep fighting the K1 rig, hoping that it drops good items. Unfortunately, I'm not willing to do this. Even the K1 rig is too strong to defeat by myself, so I have to rely on someone else to carry me through this. Or I could just buy all the items, but that wouldn't be any fun, because then I would end up like this guy who just one-shots everything. Since the gameplay loop of Crixivia is nothing more than an endless grind until a rare item drops and then trying to sell that rare item to make money, the game becomes less about overcoming challenges and more about finding the most efficient grinding method to generate revenue. Is this fun for some people? I'm sure it is. People loved the Diablo 3 real money auction house because it gave them a way to make money by playing a video game. That's fine, and I think that this is actually the only way that play to earn would ever really work. But in order for these in-game items to have any value, the developers must make the drop chance exceedingly low. Because time is money, friend. Blizzard, the developers of Diablo 3, ultimately decided to remove the auction house as it made playing the game less fun. If you weren't willing to purchase the legendary items, you would most likely never see them. A majority of people want their skill to be the defining factor in overcoming a challenge, not the size of their wallet. Since Crixivia is free to play, the main way that the developers get money is through transaction fees on the NFT marketplace. Crixivia themselves isn't selling any items to the players, everything on the marketplace comes from another player. So if people aren't using the marketplace, Crixivia can't afford to keep the game running. Therefore, they're financially encouraged to keep item drop chances as low as possible to give players a reason to use the marketplace. As another avenue for revenue, Crixivia also sells a cryptocurrency. This coin, called KXA, was first sold to the public in an initial coin offering in 2021, but it's fallen over 90% in value since then. Depending on who you ask, the reason for using crypto and NFTs in video games varies. But one of the most common arguments is that it allows for free and unrestricted trade of in-game items that carry a real-world value. While this may sound like a fine idea, we start to run into problems when we expand the player base of the game outside of one country. Video games typically, although not always, adhere to regional pricing. This means that games may be cheaper or more expensive in some regions, depending on factors such as the average wages and cost of living in those areas. This is done to ensure that players worldwide have access to the same gaming experience. However, regional pricing doesn't work when you have tradable digital items that have a real-world value. For example, on the Steam Marketplace, players can buy and sell items using their local currency, but your currency is automatically converted so that everyone ends up paying the same price. So, for example, if I listed a Counter-Strike skin for $100, someone in Argentina would see the price as 20,000 pesos. $100 for a skin may seem pricey, but it's reasonable for someone in the United States where the average wage is $4,000 a month. 
But in Argentina, where the average wage is more like 1,000 US dollars a month, $100 is going to be a pretty significant portion of their income. Since the players with the strongest currency have the most buying power, they ultimately set the price on the marketplace. This makes it prohibitively expensive for players in poorer nations to participate in the marketplace, since the items are all going to be way too expensive. This essentially means that the players in the poorer nations are only able to get items via grinding, which can be extremely time consuming and also, it's not very fun. The only way to ensure a fair marketplace that also allows for regional pricing is to limit trades between different regions, which is possible, but sort of defeats the entire point of using cryptocurrency. It's an inherent flaw in a digital global marketplace, and it's not something that crypto can fix. Now, this isn't a huge deal in a game like Counter-Strike since all of the items are just cosmetics and have no gameplay differences. But in Crixivia, the items that you can purchase make your character directly stronger. This basically means that players in nations that have strong currencies will have complete in-game superiority over players from nations with weak currencies. Trixivia is severely limiting their potential player base by basing their entire game around this marketplace, and further limiting it by requiring the usage of cryptocurrency, which has a very low global adoption rate. It's a poor design choice and an even worse business decision. Like I said before, Crixivia mostly makes money off of transaction fees. This means that there needs to be a lot of trading volume, and new money must keep flowing into the system, otherwise they can't afford to keep the lights on. If you limit your player base too much, your game will plateau in growth quickly, and that inflow of money is going to stop much quicker than it would have had you had just sold items directly to players and not let them trade them at all. This is why nearly every single free-to-play video game does not allow trading of purchased in-game items. It's just not good business. Despite the flaws of the game's economy, do I think that Crixivia at least offers a good game? No. It's extremely unfinished and of questionable quality, and I fear that they'll never be able to deliver the game that they've promised. But what if you don't care about the game, and you're only interested in grinding and getting paid? Well, there's nothing to do in the game outside of fight the same boss over and over again hoping that a rare item drops. Then, when that rare item does drop, you try and sell it. But if everyone is also trying to do the exact same thing, then who's going to be the buyer? The only reason that anyone would want to buy an item in Crixivia today is so that they can skip the early game grind to get directly to the end game grind. This effectively creates a market of mostly sellers with very few buyers since everyone here has the exact same goal, make money. This wouldn't be that much of a problem if there was something else to do besides grind and wait for rare items, but that's kind of the only reason to play the game right now. People are going to get bored of this and quit when they realize that nobody wants to buy their items. Judging by the OpenSea marketplace for Crixivia, it looks like the total lifetime sales of in-game items is less than $1,500, which is pretty dismal. So in conclusion, here's my stance on using blockchain in a video game. Is using Game Maker Studio the best way to create your 100% science-based dragon MMO? No, far from it. Is using cryptocurrency and NFTs to represent in-game items the best way to create a real money marketplace MMO? No, far from it. Is there anything inherently wrong with either of these scenarios? Not really. Well, that's not considering the fact that NFTs and crypto waste a lot more energy than traditional databases. And also that most NFTs and cryptocurrencies are just pump and dumps or scams or Ponzi schemes, but let's forget about that. Anyway, using blockchain isn't the most efficient approach, but at least Crixivia is trying to make it work. And if they do end up being successful and getting millions of players, then all the power to them. But it seems that the developers behind Crixivia care more about crypto than about making a good game. I mean, just look at their website. And in taking this approach, they've not only created a cryptocurrency that's done nothing but lose value over time, they've also created a pretty terrible video game. If they were actually interested in making an immersive 3D MMO with a real money economy, they probably wouldn't have used crypto. Or at least they would have made a complete game before they sold hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of unregistered securities. So to me, this project looks to be entirely driven by profit and not at all by passion for video games. Will I be returning to Crixivia anytime soon? No way. But I'm excited to follow the progress of the development of the game, and I'll be watching from a distance to see how things turn out. But until then, I bid thee farewell, Crixivia. With my gameplay and analysis of Crixivia complete, it's time to rate the game on my five point scale. Point number one, ease of access. Getting into the game is a piece of cake. You don't even need to download the game. 
but the WebGL client is terrible. They shouldn't even offer this. It just makes the game look bad. Force people to download it. You don't have to offer a web client. I gave Decentraland a 5 out of 5 for ease of access because of their web client, but that game lets you play without connecting a crypto wallet, so I have to take one point off for Crixivia. 4 out of 5. Point number 2. Graphics and audio. In my opinion, Crixivia looks horrible. It actually looks even worse when you consider that this is what they're calling an immersive world with an innovative technology. If you think Crixivia looks good, you either haven't played a video game in 25 years, you're lying, or you're blind. There's nothing more to say here. This game needs a complete visual overhaul if they want to be considered competitive in 2023. The audio, on the other hand, is, oh, it's abysmal. Not only do the NPCs speak nonsense sentences, their voices seem to be just assigned at random. Most of the enemies are missing sounds entirely, and the sound effects that play when you attack or cast spells are all pretty basic stock sounds. But the music is pretty nice, so I will give them credit for that. I gave Crixivia's graphics and audio each a 0.5 out of 2.5, for a total of 1 out of 5. Point number 3, the gameplay. First of all, Crixivia is not an MMO. It is a multiplayer online game with instance dungeons and a hub world. Not a big deal, but worth pointing out considering that they make a ton of other ridiculous claims on their website. Regardless, I did find Crixivia's combat to be interesting. Now, it's certainly clunky, but it is interesting. Unfortunately, the poor hit registration, unresponsive controls, and my high ping made it difficult to fully appreciate the combat system. Socketing gems in your equipment to gain skills is interesting and could potentially allow for some very deep character creation. But that's about all the good. Everything else sucks. There's no tutorial, the UI is inconsistent and buggy, the game crashes constantly, the difficulty spike is insane, and there's literally nothing to do but grind to the same boss fight over and over again hoping that better gear drops. I think that there may be a PvP arena mode, but I couldn't figure out how to get it to work, and I doubt that would have changed my opinion since I would most likely either have never found a match or I would have just been stomped by someone decked out in expensive items. Crixivia in its current state is more like a prototype than something that they should be releasing to the public. 1 out of 5. Point number 4. The use of blockchain, crypto, and NFT technology. Like I said before, it makes no sense for Crixivia to use the blockchain. They don't even follow their own logic for using it, since the developers can still censor and prevent players from owning items if they determine that the players obtain the items in a way that they don't like. But we already knew this, obviously a video game isn't possible to decentralize. Why would you want a decentralized video game anyway? What's the benefit? The game already has an internal database and transaction system separate from the blockchain. In fact, it actually seems to work better than the blockchain since it was actually functioning at the time that I was playing. Blockchain does have one amazing property that no other technology does, though. It's the ultimate buzzword. If you put the word blockchain next to anything, you immediately get exposed to a group of people who are willing to give you money, even if your project looks like absolute crap. Actually, your project could just be a complete scam, and people would still give you money. Crixivia obviously knows this, since their entire website and social media presence is targeted at crypto people. If your player base only consists of people who are also financially invested in your game and expecting a return on their investment, you're destined for failure. Without a constant flow of new investors to pump the old investors' bags, the old investors are going to get frustrated and all try to cash out, crashing the game's economy. Wait a minute, that sounds like a Ponzi scheme. So, in conclusion, Crixivia uses the blockchain as a way of trading in-game items, even though they have the technology to do this all without the blockchain. Additionally, they use cryptocurrency as a way to enable non-refundable crowdfunding in the form of an initial coin offering, also known as selling unregistered securities. And lastly, the game is entirely centralized and under complete control of the Crixivia developers anyway, so the blockchain doesn't make the game decentralized either. If you still think that Crixivia using the blockchain makes sense on a technical level after hearing all of this, then you either have no idea how video games work, you're being willfully ignorant, or you're so bought into the idea of crypto that you have lost the ability to use basic critical thinking skills. Zero out of five. Point number five, will this project succeed? The game has a rather small but dedicated player base. Judging by what I saw in game, there's about 10 players. Looking at the OpenSea collection for the NFTs, there are only about 75 unique owners, and the collection has only seen 58 sales for an all-time volume of a little bit more than $1,000. Additionally, the game's cryptocurrency, the KXA coin, is only held in 650 total wallets. 
So based on these metrics, at most, Crixivia has 650 investors, and probably less than 100 of them have ever bothered to even launch the game. In my opinion, Crixivia is an auction house simulator with a boss fight grinding mini game. The only reason that people played this game is so that they can get items to sell for money. It's all about making money. But Crixivia is advertised solely to crypto people, so normal gamers not only will never play this game, but they'll never find it in the first place. And this is all without mentioning the sorry state of the game today. It's boring, buggy, looks ugly, and is extremely unfinished. I know it's a beta, but as a developer, I would be embarrassed to let the public play the game in such an unfinished state. It just makes you look incompetent. To the average gamer, Crixivia looks like a bad joke. If you play this game for as long as I did and you can still say this is a great game, then you are drunk on copium. Or you're an investor in the game and your 90% loss is making it hard for you to accept reality. This game is not impressive, it's not interesting, and it's not good. It's sad. And the worst part of all? This is one of the better crypto games that we've played so far. One out of five. I gave Crixivia a total score of 28 out of 100. Very bad, but at least it's playable. Thanks for sticking around until the end of the video. Sorry this video took a little bit longer to get out than usual, but I've gotten a lot busier at my real job recently, so I've had less time to work on the videos. Your continued support has been so awesome to see, and I'm glad to have you all here participating in the growth of my channel. I've got a great surprise planned for the 1000 subscriber milestone, so if you're not already, make sure to subscribe. And while you're here, why not check out some of my other reviews of NFT games? As always, I'm John, and I'll see you next time as we continue our search for the worst NFT game ever. Goodbye.